we uh, going to start with verse number six, but we're going to go back and review also. A parable. A parable is a uh, is a figure of speech, so to speak. And there are many figures of speech, and in the parable there are sub figures of speech also sometimes. Some. Some uh, lessons that Jesus gave, people referred to as parables, but they are not. One of them is, is, is Luke, the 16th chapter, where it talks about the story of the rich man and Lazarus. That's a real historical fact. Here now, <clears throat> everybody is standing out here today, and he's talking to them about events that they understand. They see this a lot. And he began to teach again by the sea. And such was a very great multitude. How many people was this now? Probably ten to 20,000 people. Gathered him, and he got into a boat in the sea, and sat down, and the whole multitude was by the sea and on the land. Now he goes down there, and he used natural acoustics so they could hear his voice. Water carries sound across the top of the water. Parables now are, is using a physical event or habit to teach a spiritual thing. And he got into a boat in the sea and sat down, and the whole multitude was by the sea and on the land. And he was teaching them many things in parables. Parabole, to throw beside is what it means. And he was saying to them, in his teaching, listen to this. Behold, the sower went out to sow. The sower went out to sow. And it came about that as he was sowing, some seed fell beside the road. This is the first person type of person. Now the seed is the word of God, but what happens to the seed is the soils that the seed falls into is individuals. The seed is the Word of God, but the soil is individuals and in how that they receive the Word of God. And some fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate it up. And other seed fell on rocky ground, and where it had no, not so much soil, and immediately it sprang up, and because it had no depth of soil. Now what happens here, if you go along the highways and the byways, you'll look on the side of the road and you'll see that there's plants growing on the side of the road. But usually the plants only get so big because the, the ground is very hard and rocky there and it will dry off. But it'll grow because there's moisture and it's heat. There's moisture, natural moisture in the air, the, the, the dew, and it'll grow real fast but then it dies. That's what he's talking about here. So they understood this. Behold, the sword went out to sow, and it came about that he was sowing. Some fell beside the road. And the up birds came and ate it up. Now, beside the road, these are the hard roads that go around the field. This is where people walk. This is where traffic is around the field. And the, the seed could not go into the ground. And then when it, it doesn't go on the ground, then the birds, the sparrows, or whatever kind of birds, they come along and they eat the seed up so it's gone. And other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil and immediately it sprang up and because it had no depth of soil. That's what we talk about beside the road. Now number six. And after the sun had risen, it was scorched because it had no root. It withered away. It withered away. Now he's just talking here about things that in their everyday life, they see this year after year. They know how the sower goes out to sow. This was an agrarian society. Now let's go back and read number six. Kai hote ane telen ho helios E ka ma tiste, kai dia to me e ke rizam exe ronte. And when 
It had risen the sun. Literally, he had risen the sun because the sun is actually a masculine, masculine gender. When he had risen the sun, he scorched and burned. And because the not to have root, it was dried out. It was caused to be dried out. Ek a ron thin ron the. Third person singular, first heiress, and dignity passive. It was caused to dry out. Now verse number seven. Seven is a little bit longer verse. Kai alo a pasin ace pas a kantos. Kai ana basin he a kante kai sin a ni zon auto kai carpon book edokin and after or and another that is and other and other seed it fell third person singular second heiress indicative it fell in the thorns, among the thorns. Ace toss, a contos, a contos. Thorns. Now, here in this country, after 1880, we have tumbleweeds. And we've had a lot of rain this year, and the tumbleweeds are just really prevalent. I had to go out yesterday and mow a bunch of them down out there with a mower because they were getting ready to make seed. And they, if anything gets around them, the, the tumbleweeds, is going, they're, they're going to just starve whatever it is. If you, put, if you build a garden out there and you didn't take the weeds or the tumbleweeds out of it, you wouldn't have much of a garden, would you, Marilyn? Marilyn? What? If you had a garden out there and you planted a garden and if you didn't take the weeds out of it, they would starve your plants that you planted in the garden. Yes. You'd have... They would they starve out unto the acanthos, unto the thorns, and uh, they came up, they rose up, and the thorns, and they crowded and choked it, the fruit not it gave. The plants won't live long enough to have fruit on them, whether it's potatoes or whatever it is. Now, back at this period of time, in the in in the Middle East, they didn't have uh, tomatoes, they didn't have corn, uh, uh, potatoes, anything like that at all. But what they had was uh, wheat and barley, mainly wheat and barley. And if you let the, the weeds grow out there in the wheat and barley, the wheat and barley is going to be very, very um, sparse. You're going to get just a little bit of fruit off of them, a little bit of produce. Now, when you plant cotton, or anything. You've got to go out there and weed it. Now, we had cotton on our farm down there for 80 years, I guess, something like that. And if you uh, if you don't cultivate the cotton, cotton, you go out there and first thing you do, the cotton comes up, and you got to chop the cotton. You you've got too much seed out there, so you go chop and leave spaces between the cotton. Mm -hmm. And you clean out the weeds when you're doing that also. You chop some of the cotton out and you clean out the weeds. And then, after it gets up so long, so strong, the little uh, stalks of cotton are very strong. And you go out there with a, uh, a cultivator. And the cultivator has wires on it. And the cultivator, the wires, tear up the weeds out and they go by and the, and the little cotton stalks are so strong that they just stand there. But you've got to do this often. I remember Don Sabru, uh, the guy that farmed our place down there, he didn't do much cultivating, did he, Marilyn? He didn't do any weed control hardly at all. And when Don Sabru would come down there, he'd he, he give him the willies so bad to see all those weeds out there in that cotton, that he'd go home and jump on the co cultivator and start cultivating his weeds with the cotton whether they needed it or not. He'd just give him the willies when he'd see all the, those weeds down there. The weeds and the thorns. And they crowded it out and not gave it, not did he yield fruit. Number eight.
Ant, Kai, Allah, and Payson, Ace, Tain, Gay, Tain, Kalain, Kai, Edodu, Edido, that is, Hain, Race, Tria, Conta, Kai, N, Ace, Exe, Conta, Kai, N, Ace, a carton, Kai, Elegine, Pos, Eke, Ota, Akuane, Akueto, and others. Now, all are usually is a, a strong adversity conjunction here, but all of here is a nominee plural neuter, kind of a relative pronoun, and others. They fail, or it fail, each one of them. Talking about each individual seed unto the earth. And the good, the good earth, the kalane, the good earth. And it kept on giving. Third person singular, imperfect, indicative, active. It kept on baby giving fruit. Uh, coming up, carpon there as fruit. Coming up is accusative singular masculine present participle. Coming up and growing, growing, and harvested. That comes from therizo. And harvested, produced. Uh, one, hen, one, uh, thirty, one thirtyfold, and one. That word hen there, is, and is also page 137, both of them. But this is not a preposition, this is a numeral. And one, sixty. And one, a hundredfold. And he kept on saying, who has ears mm -hmm. to hear, let him hear. Who had ears to hear, ota. There's the scientific word, optic, optic, ota. That means ears, that means a function of ears. He who had the ears <coughs> to hear, let him hear. Verse number 10 now. Kai hote, aganito, kata monas, eroton, alton, hoi, peri, alton, sin, tois, dudodeca, tas, parabolos. And when? Kai, the conjunction there, page 208. And when we have a little adverb of time there, he he became third person singular, second aorist indicative active. He became that comes from genomai, get uh, genito. He became according to monos, kata monos, uh, alone, according to alone, separately. They kept on interrogating him. I say this a lot of times when I get through with my class. Uh, 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 Rotao, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Do you want to grill me? Do you want to uh, question me, interrogate me over this class? They kept on questioning and interrogating him. Accusing singular mass and third person pronoun, that I'll have told there. And then hoi. Hoi, here we have a definite article with a practical substance with it. The ones. Perry, around him. Perry, page 346 in the analytical Greek lexicon. Together with 
the 12 and the 12 parables, the 12 the parables. They kept on questioning him about the, the parables. The 12 did. Who are the 12? Who are the 12? The 12 apostles. They were the ones called out the church. They were in the church, but then they were called out to be sent forth to do something special. And even Judas Issachariot was uh, part of that group. Now let's do one more verse here. Kai elegan altoi simen to mysterion didotai teis basiliais to theu echinais de tois exo and parabolais ta panta genetai. And he kept on saying to them, To you, the mystery, the secrets, the mysterion there. We got our word mystery right out of that word. Mysterion. A, a, a secret or a mystery is a mystery to the uninitiated. And to understand these secrets, first of all, you must be a child of God. You must be initiated. Now there are many secret societies. There's the Knights of Columbus. There is a Mormon church that basically robbed uh, the secrets of the Masonic Lodge, is what they did. Almost everything in the Mormonism comes from the Masonic Lodge. The Masonic Lodge, we have other secret societies and we have the Ku Klux Klan, and we have even black Ku Klux Klans, you know, the, the, the different black societies that you have. You have these uh, Black Lives Matter, Antifa. These things, secret societies. Now, one time, a long time ago, Marilyn's dad was, a, was in the Masonic Lodge, the 32nd degree Masonic Lodge. And they used to come by my uh, service station where I worked, and, and they'd get gasoline, and her mother would be sitting there pointing at the windshield, making me get every bug off the windshield. They, her dad would come up and say, top it off, and, and I'd top it off. I'd check every tire. I'd check the, 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 uh, everything in the car, all the fluids and everything. And he came up there with me one time uh, after I got through, and I think Marilyn's mother was giving me trouble about the windshield. And I washed all the windows and everything on it for, and I, he got about two dollars worth of gasoline. <laughs> That's the way it was. It wasn't very. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, <coughs> he came in there, and I, I gave him his change. He he paid ga cash for the gasoline. He gave and I gave him the change. <clears throat> and he wanted to shake my hand, and I shook his hand. And then he gave me five or twenty dollars. I can't remember what it was. It was quite a bit of money back then. This is probably nineteen twenty. Well, probably a twenty. Yeah. He gave me this this twenty dollar bill, and it shocked me. Why did he do this? I said, "Thank you very much." But why did you do that? He said, "Well, you're one of the brothers." I said, "What brothers?" <laughs> You're one of the lodge. And I said, no, I'm not part of the lodge. Well, he said, you gave me the handshake. And I said, well, I don't know what I did, but I said, I'm not part of the lodge. But I said, a lot of my family are. And he said, oh, well. And he smiled and, and said, thank you for the good service you give to us every time. And which I did. I really did everything I could. That secret society, that's a mystery, a mystery, a secret society. They have a special handshake. Whatever it is, I did it at that time without knowing it. Well, there's handshakes, there's different kinds of things, there's words. When uh, people would go in and they were fighting in the war, in World War I, World War II, when they go across lines, even the Civil War, they'd have secret words that they would use that only the initiated knew. Now we as God's people, 
The Bible is our book. It's our mail. People out there, even the Mormons and the Seventh-day Adventists and the uh, Catholics, Jehovah Witnesses, the Bible's not their mail, really. I mean, they use it, but they don't use it. These secrets that Jesus is telling to his king, uh, to his church members, there is something about true New Testament baptism, true New Testament fellowship in churches that is different than if you've never experienced that. I cannot explain it, except God opens windows and opens doors. And there's a time element in learning always. There's a time element in learning. I had many people in my classes over the years. The one girl was in my classes of very faithful, her and her husband both. And one day after I was preaching, I was talking about the soul and the spirit and, and the body and all of that and, and the differentiate of it and the, the angels and spirits and all of that. And she came up to me that time and she just hugged me and kissed me and shook my hand and she said, today I understand that. You said it a hundred times, but I can go out and teach it today. Because I got it. I caught it. I got it. I understand it now. I don't know why it took me so long, but I understand it today. <laughs> Sometimes that's the way it happens, isn't it? Now, Sharon went to church almost all of her life. But she never heard anybody teach about a New Testament church or scriptural baptism. She never heard anybody talk about uh, the Lord's Supper, really. It was just uh, a memorial, and it was something to get a blessing. And baptism and all of this. And she came to my classes, and she said, I've never heard these things, but it is there all the time. It was there. I just didn't understand it. It was there. And he kept on saying to them, to you, the mysteries, the secrets it has been given. The dote, third person singular, perfect indicative passive, it has been given to you. Perfect tense is done. Indicative mode is a statement of fact. Passive voice, it has been done. Done upon you. Of the kingdom, the basileos, to the you, the kingdom belonging to God. To those, moreover, the ones that on the outside, in parables and all things, it comes to pass. Now let's go back and read that just a little bit, these last five verses in our translation. And other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. And other seeds fell into good soil, and they grew up and increased, and they yielded crop and produced thirty, sixty, and a hundred fold. And as he was saying this, he was he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And as soon as he was alone, his followers, along with the twelve, kept on asking him about the parable. And verse number 11, And he was saying to them, To you it has been given the mystery, the secrets of the kingdom of God, and to those who are outside, they get everything is in parables. Verse number 12 now. One more verse. Parables are to explain things and make you understand things, but to others it closes off your understanding. Hina, Blepontes, Bleposin, Kai, Me, Edosin, Kai, Akusantes, Akusousin, Kai, Me, Sinasin, in order that. Seeing, they may see. Seeing, nominative or 
nominative, plural, masculine, present, participle, active, seeing, continually seeing, they see, third person, singular, present, indicative, active, they see, they see. But, now that chi there is not just a, uh, a conjunction right there, but it's but. Page 208, it's kind of a strong adversive conjunction. But, not they may understand. Third person plural, second error, subjunctive active. May, that's a subjunctive mode. The mode of doubt, doubtful affirmation. And, hearing, they may hear, but not they may understand. The reason for parables? Two reasons. Is to teach the initiated and to block the understanding of the uninitiated. To teach the initiated but to block the understanding of the uninitiated. That's the par reason for parables here. Our Father, we send this message out for your honor and glory. Please use it, Father, as you feed your sheep all over the world with it. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to do this message. Please forgive me where I failed you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.